Well, folks, we need to talk seriously about Nintendo Switch 2. I know some people have been worried that whenever Nintendo does this event, this fiscal year, this announcement, they say they have plans, some sort of announcement surrounding some news surrounding Nintendo Switch 2, that we're going to have to worry about its impact on the Nintendo Switch sales and the potential of Nintendo Switch not hitting that sales target that Shintura Furukawa, president of Nintendo, stated they want to hit in 13 and a half million units. Now, a large part of this won't be determined until we have that Nintendo Direct next month, which could be a pretty big banger or it could be kind of mediocre. It's not like we really know what's going to be present in that direct. And because of that, we need to think about obviously the future of the platform and why Nintendo thinks this is the right fiscal year. Let's say it doesn't come out in March that they want to actually talk about the Nintendo Switch too. Well, it's pretty obvious why Nintendo needs to start looking towards and working towards that system's release and maybe have it come out sooner rather than later. When we look at the updated sales chart in the United States, which is Nintendo's largest market, to be clear, you look at Nintendo's financials, the United States make up the biggest chunk of their sales in the entire world. We need to really pay attention when the sales there are maybe not doing so hot. So we have this coming, it really comes from Matt Piscatello, but we have this summary post by Shinobi602 of the updated Circana sales data for the month of April. And there's some fascinating stuff in here. So the total US spending fell around 3% in April compared to April of last year. PlayStation 5 was the number one console in units and revenue, followed by Switch, which was number two in units and number three in revenue, and Xbox Series at number three in units and number two in revenue. PlayStation 5 is currently the US market leader by a significant margin. Hardware sales declined a minimum of 26% compared to April of 2023. And this is the number that really stands out. Nintendo Switch dropped 69% year over year. A 69% sales decline. That is, by the way, the very first month. The month of April is the very first month of this fiscal year. A 69% nine percent sales drop playstation 5 sales are eight percent ahead of where playstation 4 was on a time aligned basis xbox series is trailing xbox one by 13 percent uh stellar blade was the top selling game in april followed by hell divers 2 at number two call of duty modern warfare 3 at number three hell divers 2 remains the best selling premium game in 2024 hell divers 2 was also the number one game on steam by monthly active users and both sea of thieves which debuted at number three and grounded at number nine were in the top 10 selling games on playstation 5 in april and playstation portal was the best selling accessory in dollar sales we don't know about unit sales here for both april and 2024 year two date now the interesting part here of course is we all know that april of last year we were heading into the lead up to the release of tears of the kingdom so there's a pretty explainable reason the sales would be declined so damn much there's no tears of the kingdom level game about to drop so with no tears of the kingdom level game about to drop obviously system sales are going to be down tears of the kingdom actually boosted switch sales to end up beating their projected numbers last year so this 69 percent drop could already be part of the story of the 13 and a half million they are projecting for this fiscal year so this may not seem like it's going to affect nintendo's overall targets for this fiscal year but we need to look at things beyond just those targets and look at the overall health of the switch while there is a healthy amount of people still playing switch and there's still decent demand for the platform on the marketplace i think when we're seeing and and i think this is going to continue i think the theme all year long with the circana sales chart is going to show year over year month over month declines for nintendo switch sales regardless of what Nintendo has coming out because they've really hit that market saturation point and Nintendo is aware of this. Furukawa has already spoken at length about how they want to they want to be a, a second, third, fourth, fifth sales in people's homes because look, at the end of the day Nintendo knows there's only so many people interested in buying home consoles and a, the bigger general blue ocean strategy maybe isn't what it once was now that we have tablets and all these other devices vying for your time and your entertainment. So they really need to focus on those core gamers and that's what switch did and so i do think that 
Nintendo is not concerned, and I don't know that they were ever concerned, but for us publicly, us fans talking about this, I don't think Nintendo's worried about what's going to happen with Nintendo Switch 2 and whenever they announce it, because it probably won't impact Switch sales that much. Switch sales are already rapidly declining, and they're going to keep rapidly declining because at the end of the day, the Switch is in its eighth year on the market, and pretty much I would say 99% of Nintendo's best games are being saved for the new platform. So with most of their games being saved, yeah, we're still getting monthly releases, but let's look at those monthly releases, right? The first game in the second half of the year is literally, what, a return of the 1990s, you know, Nintendo World Championship stuff. Not exactly a really big seller, but trying to hit a little bit on that nostalgia for older gamers. Maybe try to get some younger gamers in as well. Uh, you got Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which is probably hoping to be successful off of Luigi's Mansion 3. And look, I can't sit there and pretend that Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, after how well Luigi's Mansion 3 sold, couldn't potentially be maybe even a 10 million seller. It might be the only game on Nintendo slate that has a shot at that. Obviously, we recently had the thousand year door, but all these big games we're talking about, these aren't new properties. These are currently known things. The new games were things like Endless Ocean Luminous, a very niche game. Oh, and then Princess Peach Showtime, which we already know didn't really light the sales chart on fire. Probably did well enough for Nintendo's expectations, but I'm not saying that it's a failure. I'm saying that it's not a big momentum shifting game. And there might not be one this year. Now I say 99% of their top tier games might be being saved because look, we could still end up with some really good remasters and ports that come in the second half of this year. And there's always that chance that Metroid Prime 4, which would be a very big premium experience, could still land on Switch this year, entirely possible. There's nothing that really rules it out. Uh, the only reason that people are like trying to rule it out for this year is because they want it to be launched on Nintendo Switch 2, either as a dual release with Switch or as a Nintendo Switch 2 exclusive. That's a personal want. We've never actually had any indications that Metroid Prime 4 is going to be on Switch 2 in the first place. It's announced as a Switch game, all the rumors around it, we're about it being on Switch. There's not really an indicator it's a Switch 2 game, but there's also no indications it's actually going to come out this year. So unless you want to be like, because Metro Prime Remastered came last year, we must be getting Metro Prime 4 this year. I mean, fine. I want the game to come out. But besides that one game, I'm not sure there's a lot of premium games left on Nintendo Slate. And so the Switch is going to continue to see these sales declines. And we need to start accepting that Nintendo is in a transition. Whether you want them to be or not, they are transitioning to their next platform. And I think that that bodes um, a little concern. People worry that Nintendo might botch the transition, but also excitement because every time that we get towards a new system launch, it's a magical time. But you think about this, we're in the eighth year of Nintendo Switch, and even if this platform launches in March, if it happens to launch after March 3rd, that means it will have launched after Nintendo Switch has completed eight full years on the market. That's nearly a decade of one generation before we got to Nintendo's next. And now that Nintendo's not launching handhelds and home consoles separately, there wasn't any other real system launches in between, just a lot of iterative systems based on the current. So the Switch Lite, the Switch OLED, et cetera, never a true different device. So I do think that we need to sit back and appreciate what this is now that we're gonna get fewer of these system launches from Nintendo coming once every seven, eight years. And with that, uh, just be really excited for what the new system could enable Nintendo to do. I think a lot of us saw a huge chunk of Nintendo's games kind of bumping up into the limitations of Switch. We saw that with Tears of the Kingdom for sure. We've seen that with pretty much every Monolith Soft game put out. Those are the two studios that I think people are most excited about to take advantage of the new power opportunities of Switch, not just from a visual perspective, a gameplay perspective. That's what's really exciting because, look, for all the talk about how much graphics can be really cool graphics i don't really feel are a big selling point today it's really gameplay and power cannot just be used just for graphics it can be used for gameplay ideas and concepts what they did with the building mechanics and the glue and all that in tears of the kingdom might not have been actually possible on wii u especially at the level at which tears of the kingdom did it also with the sky and the underground 
that might have needed the power of Switch in order to make that happen. So what can the Zelda team then do gameplay-wise and ideal-wise with Switch 2? I don't know, but I'm really looking forward to it. And then obviously Mario's and, and its inventiveness. They had obviously Mario Odyssey that seemingly took pretty good advantage of Switch. Well, now what's it going to look like on Switch 2 with more power? What are they going to not just make it look like visually, but gameplay-wise? What crazy gameplay ideas do they maybe unlock by having more power at their disposal? And this is pretty much true of all of Nintendo's franchises. Look, a few of them, you know, like side-scrolling Kirby games might not feel too different, but I do think that there's a lot more gameplay opportunities going to be unlocked, not just for third parties, but really Nintendo with this next system. And with the sales declining, it's very clear they need to do something about it. And I know the sales are still pretty strong in Japan, and Japan is one of the major markets for Switch, but it isn't even close to the level of the market the United States is as their number one market. And if it's going to keep rapidly declining here, yeah, Nintendo's aware of what's going on. They need to reinvigorate the market with a new product. And you do that while the Switch is technically still relevant. So Nintendo might have actually did something that I would have thought a year ago would have been a mistake. If you release a new platform in March of 2025, a year ago, I would have told you, man, what a big mistake for them. But I also didn't expect Switch to continue to still sell this well, even with the 69% decline. Sell as well as it's still selling during year eight. I, I don't know if any of us could have predicted that. So that's a credit to Nintendo. Uh, I do apologize for the, the video constantly skipping back here. We're having some uh internet issues in the house right now but thank you guys so much for being here be sure to tune into our, our nintendo prime podcast tonight we have our that should, be sure to tune into the nintendo bite podcast tonight we have a uh full slate of nine guests coming on uh, i can go over all of them we, let's see we got uh well obviously there's me eric and thunder steve 85 andres restart unfortunately won't be making it tonight but we have a bunch of people so that's all right we have favlam coming on john evo game junction Nishquit Pops, Steph Tendo, who's one of the guys that helps me out with my shorts. And then we have ex-Gigglypuff Madison coming back on as well. So we got a pretty packed slate for you guys. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are awesome and amazing. And I'm really sorry we didn't have a video over the last couple of days. Uh, there's just been a lot going on. Plus, I got some sponsorship stuff I got to be working on. Um, but hey, we're trying to get everything wrapped up because you know what's coming up, right? Set aside the podcast. You're going to see Nintendo Prime streaming a ton over the next couple of weeks, starting tomorrow with the PlayStation Showcase. Catch you guys in the next video.